Welcome to the Seahawks Man to Man podcast, powered by Blue Wire. Shout out to the new company. My name is Michael Sean Dugar. You guys can follow me on whatever Elon Musk is calling that app these days. My at name has not changed at Mike Dugar, M I K E D U G A R. Shout out to everyone who is either watching or listening via our YouTube channel. Seahawks Man to Man is the name of the channel. The Seahawks Man, the number two man. Appreciate the love and support on there. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Seahawks Man to Man is the name of the handle. Uh, Seahawks Man to Man as well on TikTok. Hit the like, follow, whatever buttons you need to press for everything I just said. Go ahead and do it. We really, really thank you in advance for doing that. It means a lot. Chris, go ahead and talk to him. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Christopher Kidd. You can follow me on Twitter at CKIDD206 and that's CKID206. Oh, look at that. Another week, another episode of One Big Thing. And boy, that that film had a lot of one big thing. There were so many different avenues I could have went. I'm sure Mike was probably thinking the same thing just because there was a lot of not great stuff out there and some positive stuff as well. But the Seahawks have lost two straight games. They have a big Thursday night matchup. Mike, where do you want to start with your one big thing, man? Oh, am I going first? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, um, I've, I've been going first. I said, let, let me flip it around on Mike. Let him go first this time. Okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Crystal's right. The film was bad. One of those situations where it was about as bad as it looked in real time. You know, the film wasn't any any more revealing, I guess it should say. However you felt Sunday is how it looked, you know, watching film Monday uh, and Tuesday. But my one big thing this week is the Seahawks – defending play action Uh, and i talked a little bit about this idea uh in my one big thing after the lions i believe it was that was more so just guarding the middle of the field in general didn't have to be off play action today i would like to specifically talk about play action um on all parts of the field um because it was bad uh it's been bad before it's really bad right now bad against the lions um i'll give some examples but chris can i start with some numbers today Oh, Let's do yeah. that. Let's start with some numbers today uh, because they are pertinent to the last two games and the one coming up against the Niners, as you alluded to. Uh, so let's start with Jared Goff's play action passing numbers from week four. Right? Okay. 12 for 12 for 229 yards and a touchdown in week four. He hmm. had 13 total dropbacks. The 13th one was uh, the sack that Draymond got. Uh, Draymond, excuse me, got. Uh, that led to a safety. And so 13 dropbacks, 12 completions, 222, and a tug. The tug was the Jamison Williams long touchdown. Uh, and then Daniel Jones, 9 for 12 for 101 yards, two touchdowns on 14 play-action dropbacks. Uh, he was sacked once. I think the missing dropback there is a scramble. So 9 for 12, buck, two tugs. All right, Chris, would you like to know who the number one quarterback is right now in the NFL on play action. I would guess Jared Goff. Right now, it is Mr. Brock Purdy of the oh, San wow. Francisco 49ers. So this that's that's also why I want to talk about this because it's been bad and it could get worse. Now, Goff and the Lions didn't play last week, so their numbers may have been better than Purdy's had they tore up someone. But as it stands currently, as we head into week six, Brock is the best uh, quarterback in, on play action by EPA uh, per drop back. I like the EPA instead of just the raw numbers because it takes a, it, you know into account other things when you drop back, uh, not just that you throw it, that you scramble, whatever. Are you producing first downs, touchdowns? Um, yeah, so this is an issue. It was an issue. Could be again on Thursday night. Uh, Daniel Jones had a lot of play action drops, as I mentioned, and and instead of just being what we've talked about in the past on the show and what I've mentioned specifically, uh, those kind of in breaking routes that uh, Stafford and, and Purdy have killed him with before, you know, golf uh, as well. This wasn't even that. Chris, you'll remember and everyone will. 
Daniel Jones's first two big pass plays were play action and they were screens. Yeah, back to back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back to back. And I think the third and long one may not have been play action, but after they hit the third and a million to get, you know, uh, to move the sticks on their opening drive, they went right back to a screen off play action and and got a big gain. And then from there, it was kind of of on. Credit to Brian Dable, you know, that he's the head coach of the Giants and he called the plays as well. He was in his bag because he was just finding different ways to make the Seahawks struggle with play action. You know, it was a little bit of everybody. On one of those screens, my guess would on the first, excuse me, on the first screen that I'm talking about that was play action, my guess would be that Rayshon Jenkins is supposed to have the back. Um, but he blitzes, gets tangled up, and then uh the back, I think his last name was Gray, hits him for 19 yards. Right. They actually had another pass uh, that was play action on that same drive. It was a really good design, too. Uh Daniel Jones is up throwing it to Darius Slayton in the flat. Now he drops it, so it doesn't look like a bad play, but Man, it could have been a big gain had he catch had he caught that because Jerome Baker actually follows like a wheel route and Reek Willen follows it too. So the flat is just kind of wide open. Thanks, thanks to Tyrell Dotson who kind of rallied over there to make it right. It doesn't look as bad, but the film that is one of the plays where the film looks a lot worse uh, than it did in real time, particularly because he dropped it. But yeah, Chris, they were just kind of getting cooked in a little bit of different ways, man. They had the uh, they had a, a touchdown, to, or excuse me, not a touchdown, but a big play to number 84, I believe it's Theo Johnson that tied in on a play action concept. I think that one maybe was uh was Jerome Break Jerome Baker's fault. Uh the Wendell Robinson touchdown was play action, like a little shallow cross. Uh kind of gets Julian Love out of position as the deep safety. It was only seven yards, but you know what I mean. As the deep safety, Reek Woolen kind of gets caught in the traffic of it, and then Wendell. Or when however you say his name got caught or caught the ball ends up scoring. Uh there's another one I'm thinking. Oh, Trey Brown, the 30 yard touchdown to Slayton. Another really good design. They roll everyone out right and then throw it back left. Not only is Trey beat and out leveraged, I think, uh Julian Love kind of follows Daniel Jones and he's out of position too. So he can't even help Trey. That kind of looked like a cover one situation. I could go on and on. There was just a lot of different ways. They got they got beat on different play action stuff. Uh, they got a little bit better at it as the game went on. Rayshon Jenkins kind of blanketed a concept. They blew up a screen pass uh, in the second half. Like the third quarter was was much better. Uh, the only true sack they had came on play action. Tyrell Dotson uh, ended up getting to him. Looked like a cover one situation. There's nothing open. Uh, Tyrell eventually just goes in there and gets him right. Uh, Daniel Jones also misses a. Misses a read on that. But anyway, they got him on the ground, right? So I thought they got better as it better at covering play action as it went on. But when I got through like 75% of the tape, I was like, oh boy, Brian Dable saw something in that Lions film. He saw something in some of their other film, even the little bit of some of the dolphin stuff. Um, and just was like, let's find different ways. He's not like like McVeigh or like Shanahan who will just run the same play at you <laughs> until you stop it. They both was like, I'll just find different ways. Screen here, running to the running back, tight end here, a uh, little pump fake here to the flat, you know, roll one way, throw back the other way, which is the play they actually used against the Cowboys. Uh, this, the Cowboys just played it better uh, than the Seahawks did. So, yeah, it was a really kind of rough day all around. Event, even on a on the goal line, they got better at it though. Late in the game, it was a fourth, it was a second and three on the six yard line uh, that they ended up covering a lot better. Shout out to Reek, even on a bad ankle, uh, he played that really well. So it got better over time, which is the good news. I know I've been a little doom and gloom on one big things lately, but that's what happens when they lose. <laughs> you know, one big thing, it could be one great thing. You lose to the Giants, but that in particular is going to be so important. That meaning these play action concepts of multiple types, not just play action to get the linebackers up and throw behind them to see Mike McDonald's smart. Like I'm sure he can see that that is coming and he can see that it's coming against this particular team, but it's the other stuff, you know, Shanahan is just play action. God, even Jaron Reed today, uh, he was asked to like, what's changed of, with their offense over the past couple of years. He was like, it hasn't changed. He said, they run, run, run. Then they play action. And Jay Reed wow. is right. It's a lot of runs, a lot of runs, a lot of runs. 
It's a lot of play action in a lot of different ways. Yes, they still do the stuff where they play action and try to get Ayuk behind your linebackers and in front of your safeties. That's never going to change. They're going to do that. The guys got to be ready for that too. You know, Baker in particular, uh, Baker and Tyrell Dodson in particular have to be ready for those things, uh, if, especially if they're going to commit extra body, play single high type of coverages to commit extra bodies to the run, which I think they're going to have to do. That's a little bit of teaser to what Chris is going to get to, I'm sure. Um, but on top of that, it is the screens. Like you got to, the Shanahan's probably going to find ways to play action and then get it to the fullback on the screen. He's going to play action and hit, you know, maybe RPO or something and get Debo involved on some crossers. He's going to try to see if Rayshon's eyes can be in the right place. If Julian Love's eyes could be in the right place. Like there was a lot of bad eyes, I thought, on that film, on play action. Uh, it was like that in the Lions game uh, as well. They're getting schemed up there. Got schemed up a little bit here against the Giants. And Chris, they're going up against Scheme Lord. This is the wrong guy. To have like the, both of our one big things, I know you'll get to yours in a sec. Both of ours, this is like the wrong team to have these issues against. Like, if this Thursday night game was against almost literally anyone else, I think they'd be okay. But they're the issues that they are having right now, uh, to have those going into a game against Kyle Shanahan, mm. it is so concerning. Not to say they can't beat them, the, the, the Niners have like two vulnerabilities, and if you exploit those you might be okay. One of them is they blow leads and their special teams stink. That's about it. They're all, the red zone offense, I guess, isn't isn't uh, super great either, but neither is the Seahawks red zone defense to my knowledge. So, yeah, man, this is the play action stuff, though, and that specific thing is my one big thing coming out of this game because it stems from this game against the Giants. It traces back to the Lions game. There were hints of it in the Dolphins game, but Skylar Thompson's booty, so it didn't matter that much. And then you got Daniel Jones, who was like, hey, him and Dable put the little heads together. And they were like, we can get these guys. Uh, and then now you're looking at like, it's like it's like the leveling up, play a video game where you got to like fight the, the dudes to get to the boss. They fought the dudes and lost and they're still getting to go to the boss. Hanahan is the boss. Play action king, play action god. And he's going to do all the things that Dable and uh, Ben Johnson, the Lions coordinator, is going to do all the stuff that those guys did but better with better personnel, better quarterbacks, uh, better skill guys. You know, I, um, I think this is this is the thing to watch for Seattle's passing game. They probably won't have Reek, um, but whether it's Nehemiah Pritchett, Trey Brown, Spoon, you know, like every the the edge guys, you know, protecting the perimeter and and the guys in the middle, you know, recognizing that it's play action and still getting their pass rush moves on. Like there's so much involved with stopping play action and Seahawks so far just not doing any of it really uh I think they're the worst team by EPA per drop back against play action at least in the bottom three I looked it up this morning so yeah it's there were so many examples of it in the last couple of weeks and I hope that the Seahawks are listening to the pod Mike McDonald what up man I know you're a big podcast guy if you're listening in welcome sir how you doing uh figure this out Figure this play action thing out uh, because it is a problem, problem, problem. Not a small one either. It's a big one. It's a big one, Chris. And it is something that if they don't address Thursday night, we will be looking at a one big thing segment next week of more doom and gloom. If they don't get this straightened out. It's funny how synonymous our one big thing is considering Mike and I watch the film separately we don't really text and exchange what we're thinking. I just say, hey, Mike, I'm going to go with the run defense and their inability to fill gaps and tackle. Come to find out, Mike's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm doing play action passing. And how is that synonymous, you guys? Well, the Seahawks cannot stop the run. So what does that open up? Play action. And Mike just went through all the reasons why it was effective in regards to the play action working and going up against the Niners and what they're going to want to do, which is what? Run the football. When you can't stop the run, it opens up the possibilities for play action pass where your linebackers are so focused on stopping the run that, oh, it's a pass. And now you have to run back sprinting towards open space, hoping that you can get hit in the back of the helmet, get a hand in the air just to make a play because you're out of position. And that's what the Niners are going to do. Jay Reed said it in his presser on Tuesday. Yeah, the Niners don't do nothing different. It's going to run, 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 play action pass. That is exactly what the Niners offense is built on and it's simple but yet teams can't stop it because 
maybe they're not doing their part. They're not executing. And I forget who asked the question to Jay Reed, but they asked him what were the issues within the within the game where you guys weren't executing in the gaps. And Jay Reed just said it's the little things, and it starts with just as simple as communication. Guys knowing where to be before the snap and during the snap. And in the game Sunday against the Giants, the Seahawks were out of whack. So my one big thing is the inability to stop the run. The guys being in the same gap multiple times. This wasn't a, oh, one-time thing. Missed tackles. Daniel Jones had a QB draw, I think, three or four times. And each time, he broke a tackle. He bounced off Rayshon Jenkins for one. Leonard Williams, he got stiff-armed. Now, albeit, Leonard was falling, so I'll give him a little pass on that. But you got to be able to bring him down. Those are all runs that should have gone for two or three yards, but they end up being seven, eight yards because guys weren't able to bring him down. And the good news is Brock Purdy is not Daniel Jones. They're not going to sit up there and draw a QB draw out of empty set. That's just not what the Niners are going to do. What they will do is they'll hand it off to Mason. They'll send it to the left side where Trent Williams is and let Trent get out in space and pull and have a 360-pound lineman that is physical and loves punishing corners and linebackers because the new rule is if you're a defender, you can't go low and take guys out at the knee, especially linemen, which is so unfortunate because there's nothing scarier than a 360, 340-pound lineman sprinting at you and you have to take them high. That To me, that's unfair. Maybe they should change that rule. There's got to be a an opportunity for DBs to have some leverage. There's no leverage when you have someone two times your size running at you full speed and you're trying to get off or disengage from a block to make a play on the runner. So that was one thing that I was watching the film and watching, damn, as Mike said, I watched it in game and it was like, what is going on? But then when you go back and watch the film, you can really see areas where, wow, that's why that that play was so open. And that's why there was a, a gain for X amount of yards. And you saw that time and time again. And one play that I remember vividly is it's, I want to say first quarter and it's second and seven. And you could see the Seahawks communicating. Everybody's talking about, Hey, where you should be lining up. Everything looks great. Daniel Jones, audibles, him to the head. They point out Daniel Jones points at, or at Baker. Jerome Baker, he points at him, indicating someone needs to go block this guy because we're running dead at him. We need to get him off the field, pretty much move him out the way, and we should have an opportunity to run the ball. So when the play is snapped, it's running to the left, and or excuse me, running towards the right. And in this play, I said, wow, Rayshon Jenkins and Jerome Baker are in the same gap. The gap that Ray Sean is supposed to fill is the B gap. He's where he's supposed to be. The tight end kicks out, and I believe he's blocking Derek Hall. Doesn't matter. The biggest thing is Ray Sean has that lane. He's, out, he's right on the hash, and if the running back, number 29, decides to cut that way, Ray Sean's going to be able to make the play. Leonard Williams is double teamed, so that means Baker should have the A gap. And in that scenario, Baker guessed wrong, and he jumped into the B-gap where Rayshon Jenkins is going to fill, but now they're out of position, and now the A-gap is butt naked. It's open. I could run through it. Mike can run through it. Our listeners, if you have any ability to run straight, you also could run through it. Jay Reed is trying to fight <laughs> off a block. It's too late. Luckily, though, Leonard Williams, the talented player he is, he's able to get his finger on the defender, on the running back, and trip him up. And because of that, he saves an explosive. And Mike and I were talking off wax. Mike said, that might have been a touchdown. Leonard Williams able to save the play. And that goes back to Jay Reed talking about simple communication. Hey, this is my gap. You know, you got to be. Let's do our jobs and do it effectively. And in that specific play, it wasn't executed. And that was just one example of players being out of position and hitting the wrong hole because that happens in games. Everything is fast. Everything is not in slow motion. It's it's not easy to do, but you study it, you practice it. These are the things that you work on in practice. And for it to happen in a game, it's a little unfortunate and you want guys to be better in those scenarios, but against the Giants, they were not effective. And then there's another play in the first quarter as well. This is, a, this is I believe, a 27-yard run by the number 29. 
he is able to find space because, again, Terrell Dotson, he gets into the A-gap, but Jerome Baker is also in the A-gap. So Jerome <laughs> Baker, again, he's supposed to be in the B-gap, but he gets excited and he wants to make a play on the football that he actually runs right into Terrell Dotson, who fills his lane. Terrell Dotson fills the gap. That's great. But your buddy, your teammate, guy supposed to communicate with, he is unfortunately in the same area you're supposed to be in, leaving a gashing hole in the B gap because everything else is, guess what, guys, is blocked up. So it's the little things in games that when I'm watching film saying, wow, these are, it's minute, but in the grand scheme of thing, that minute play ended up being a 27-yard gain and an explosive. And those things just can't happen. Those are little details, again, where, Daniel Jones is going to send a guy in motion, trying to confuse the defense. Hey, are they in man? Are they in zone? We're going to run this football. They audible to a run. Daniel Jones is saying, hey, I need you to go block here. And then the play is snapped, and you have both linebackers in the same gap, leaving the B gap wide open. Those are just minute mistakes that ultimately are huge, and those that can't happen. And it's unfortunate because Ray Sean gets a little shake, gets a little shimmy shake at the top of the run, and he gives up another seven, eight yards. So it was just a snowball effect of bad play, not good eyes, not staying in your gaps, not being responsible when you needed to be, when everyone's asking of you to get the job done. And then my final play that I can remember from the game, and it's it was done. I liked how aggressive Baker, Jerome Baker was, but yet again, execution-wise, it didn't work out. So in this play, Terrell Dotson, he is attacking the pulling guard and he tries to play the A gap, but Leonard Williams is actually double teamed and they collide with one another. So Jerome Baker gets blocked by puller and now there's a big crease because Leonard Williams is now doubled and bumps into Terrell Dotson who is trying to get over there. And it's literally, it's literally the, the small things. And a game usually gets bottled up. Everyone makes someone makes a tackle in there, and it's just a gang tackle. Everybody's involved. But in this scenario, there was a crease, and Tracy found crease number 29, found a bunch of creases in that game on Sunday against the Seahawks. He was able to find a crease, hit it, and he was out of there. Sometimes, as I mentioned, it gets bottled up, and it's everyone's standing there, and the, whistles, the, the refs blow it dead. That didn't happen on Sunday. Multiple times, he hit that crease, the lane opened up, and he was off and running. And those are things that can't happen and Mike had some stats so I thought you know what let me bring some stats to the table as well so one stat that stood out to me that's quite interesting in the Seahawks run defense is how many the percentage of run stuffs right all that is is a run that goes for no gain or loss Mike can you guess where the Seahawks rank after week five uh and run stuff I believe run, run stuffs I believe are specifically zero um what that's worth but no i do not know where they rank it's not good mike it's not good 25th yikes but yikes. Are, are we surprised by that because what we've seen on film indicates they're not getting in the backfield too often the their best run defense you could argue was probably against the miami dolphins and the denver broncos two teams that couldn't really do much outside of bo nix's scrambles we're going to eliminate that they didn't have much to offer they did a good job on Ramondi Steven, Ramondi Stevenson versus the Patriots, but the backup, what's his name, Mike? I'm I'm drawing a blank. Antonio backup, Gibson. Antonio Gibson decided to be the linchpin of the day and had a successful day. And then you look at the Lions. Well, everybody knew what the Lions wanted to do, and they were successful in kind of sort of slowing down David Montgomery, but he also had a few big runs, and then Jameer Gibbs just kind of went crazy because guys were in the wrong gap. So it's been something that I've seen week in and week out, but it got to a point now because they've lost two straight games. And as Mike and I mentioned, they're going up against a Niners team that's going to do what? Run the football. That's what their bread and butter is. If they can run the football, they can do any and everything else. And you can bet your million dollars that they are going to start the game and put it in Mason's hand. I forget his first name, but he's the backup Jordan running back. Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason. He's the backup running back for the Niners. He's going to get 15, 20 touches without a question. He is going to get those opportunities. They're going to pull Trent Williams. So Trent Williams is going to be out in space. They're going to have use check in the backfield, clearing it out. You're going to see that. Can the Seahawks be better than they have been and be in their right gaps? Make plays, 
Don't miss tackles. These are small things that need to be done, but in the grand scheme of things, it can result in an explosive and or a touchdown. So my one big thing was looking back at, damn, these dudes cannot stop the run, and they're missing tackles that they need to make. So hopefully Mike and I can have some positivity because, as you guys know, I've been Mr. Positive for the past two, three weeks. I had Tyrese Knight back-to-back and losing efforts. So that, that goes to show you I wasn't too doom and gloom, but it's gotten to a point I'm flipping on the film like, damn, I, I can't give anybody like, a, hey, you did really good and you guys lost. I just couldn't do it this week. So that has been my one big thing. Again, it's the Seahawks' inability to fill gaps and communicate properly in the run defense because they have been struggling so far this season. Yeah, I think you're underselling it, man. I think being in being in the wrong gap is a that ain't that ain't small at all. That's a huge thing. That's like half the damn it's, battle. I, you know? I guess I'm wording it poorly, but it's small. I guess I can't. I guess it ain't small, but it's a simple thing for that's sure. That's the word. It's that a is the, it's, thing. it's yeah. so simple. But when you're wrong, it could be so costly. Thank you, Mike. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Being in the it wrong could, gap is just. It is just a bad, it, bad, 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 Baker, bad, bad. And if someone just saw the stats, I think Baker had over 10 tackles. So you probably like, Chris, what are you talking about? He was everywhere. Yes, he was everywhere. You know why he's everywhere? Because he didn't know where he needed to be. If he was where he needed to be, he might have had six tackles. And Terrell Dotson would have had seven or eight tackles. I don't know how, how many he finished with. But the thing is, yes, he was making plays everywhere, but he was also in a few spots he's, he didn't need to be in. Like his goal line stop, that was perfect. That was that's all you could ask for him. He yeah, was back to back goal line stops too. Yeah, yeah. He, that's 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 what you want to see. But then you have plays that I mentioned earlier where him and Rashawn Jenkins are in the same spot. It's like, hey, bro, you're supposed to be in the A gap. G, what are you doing? And that can't happen, especially against the New York Giants team, a team that's one and three. Those are teams you're supposed to punish, right? And now you're going to get tested yet again. So they have a big challenge ahead. Can they right their wrongs? Yes. It's Mike, as Mike alluded to, Chris. I don't know, if, man. It's a simple thing, but if they don't do it, yeah, we're going to be doom and gloom next week as well. Yeah, very. It's a yeah, it's a simple thing, but yeah, like you said, if you if you if you're if you are in the wrong spot, if you're in the wrong spot in any part of a defense. You know, <laughs> you're in tr- you're in trouble. Uh, but yeah, Baker had uh, eight solo tackles to your point. Fourteen total. There tackles. it is. Behind him was Julian Love had ten total tackles. Um, six. Solo, I think those are the two highest. Trey Brown also had six solo. Yeah, I mean, you got everybody's got to be in the right spot. That's where it starts. It really does <laughs> it start there. And there were just gaping holes uh, yeah. on, on Sunday, to your, to your point. Yeah, and you're right. It's all connected. You got to be able to stop the run, and then you got to be able to figure out the play action part of it, too. And it is everybody. It is everybody. It's Everybody's at the second level. I know um, – Mike McDonald made a quote. He had a quote this week about how the second level defenders are not stopping the run very well. And he's correct. That's what Chris was just talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I will add to Mike McDonald, and what you were just saying, Chris, that second level is a little bit of everybody. It's not just Tyrell Dotson and Jerome Baker. That does include Ray Sean. That does include Jay Love. That will include Spoon playing nickel. My guess this week is because of the personnel that the Niners play um, and the absence of Reek. We will see a lot of big nickel this week. With three safeties, my guess would be. So that includes Kayvon Wallace. He plays a lot this week, too. Everybody. Nobody can afford to be in the wrong joint. If you are, it's a house call. We've seen it. We've seen it particularly against this team. You know, we've seen it with Debo runs. We've seen it with McCaffrey runs. McCaffrey had what, what was that last year? Like the 80-yard run off the first play, you know, because yeah. guys were in the wrong spot. Uh, bad leverage. So, um, yeah, I think it's a that's a good, good one big thing uh, to point out, you know, because if they – like I said before you went, if they are bad at the two things we are mentioning on Thursday, woof, the discourse in Seattle will get nasty uh, and justifiably so on defense because these are Chris, some of the same problems that they had last year and the year before that and the year before that. It's just changing the coordinator, changing the players, same problems. So hopefully it's not that. Chris and I would love, Mike McDonald, if you haven't tuned out by by this uh, by this point, we would love for you, for you guys to give us something – it was something positive, you know, because these feel like I guess this is how we should end this. These feel like Chris correctable things. Being where you're supposed to be, correctable, not a talent thing. Very much just a, a, an eye discipline, knowing your assignment thing. Guard play action. They have the talent to do that. So it's all about discipline, eyes, and as you opened your segment with communication. So hopefully they can do that on Thursday. They're going to need to 
Uh, and if they do, Chris, just like that, they got a big lead in first place in the division. Mm. Just like that. As doom, as, gloom, as doom and gloomy as it feels, a win Thursday, you're already in first place, but now you got a bigger lead in first place. And, and you're 1-0 in the division. That would be everything this team needs right now after two pretty bad losses. Now, well said. So we hope to come back to you guys with some happiness and a win, but you know, we ain't fans. We can only report what we see, especially Mike. Cause he down there writing stories. He'll might, I hate to say this, but if it's bad, Mike might have his story wrapped up by the second quarter. He might be texting yeah. me yet. Yeah, Chris, you know what, man, this has been quite the game stories wrapped up. We can hop on as soon as this game ends. I'm going to go do the pressers and be out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's not scenario. like that. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's we're not up like late that. and it's 2 a.m. and we got like 30 questions to answer because it was such a great game. And why couldn't they do that against the Giants? Well, come back and watch one big thing. We gave you the answer. <laughs> All right. With that said, uh, appreciate you guys tapping into the Seahawks Man to Man podcast. Run the gamut. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Blue Wire. Shout out to the new company. Follow us on Instagram, uh, TikTok. Everything is Seahawks Man to Man. You just type in Seahawks man to man on your phone, laptop, whatever tablet will pop up. All right. Like, subscribe, follow on every platform possible. We really appreciate all that love and support. As Chris mentioned, we'll come back to you guys with our post game show. Uh, This will drop Friday morning. Uh, No Niners preview. Too much to do on a short week. Uh, No standout plays for our YouTube only this week. Sorry about that. Everything's too jam packed with a short week. We'll come back next week. We'll have standout plays from the Niners game. Promise you that. All right. Uh, Chris, anything else? No, we appreciate all the love and support. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will talk to you Friday morning.